All right, hello and welcome to the KCON studio again. Today we brought a cast centered around one topic. And actually, can you guys take a guess at what it is? Fashion, exactly. Today the title of our show is Now and Future of Korean Fashion. And it's actually hosted by Represent. Now Represent, which is bringing our talk to you today, is the number one e-commerce platform that enables musicians, entertainers, athletes, as well as brands to sell their merchandise for charity. And they've actually been working with K-pop very closely for the past two years, and they're so excited to be hosting this panel for us. So let's give a round of applause for Represent. So before we get started, I would like to call up my lovely panelists to the stage. So panelists, if you will please join me. Let's give a round of applause for our panelists. Where should I sit? I'll, I'll, just, sit, I'll just sit here. <laughs> so I actually forgot to introduce myself. My name is Sobe. I'm a singer, songwriter, and host, and I will be your MC for today's panel. So it's lovely to meet you all. All right, enough about me, though. We have three amazing fashion experts here on the panel with us. So will you please introduce yourselves to our audience? Hey, guys, my name is Will, and um, I'm a fashion Instagrammer. Hey, guys, my name is Loretta, and I'm a fashion consultant. Hi, guys, my name is Coco, and I'm a singer as well from Korea. So obviously fashion is an incredibly dynamic and turbulent industry, but I feel like that's especially so within the context of K-pop. So we've prepared a couple of questions that are specific to sort of K-pop and fashion. So first and foremost, I think it's important to ask, what changes do you guys think we've seen within the Korean fashion industry in the last two years as a direct consequence of K-pop? Anybody want to take the first question? Well, personally, um, when I look at these idols, I, I take a look at what their outfits are. That's what catches my eye first. And then when I see that outfit, if I really like it, I want to go find it all over the internet. But I'd say around three or four, five years ago, um, all these outfits that they wore were mostly like custom made or like costumes by the company. But then I guess more and more recently, um, especially when BTS broke into the American market, they've been wearing, I don't know if I'm, if I'm allowed to say brand names, but like Italian big designer brands. And then they're more and more easily f um, found because of like their noticeable logos and stuff. So I noticed that they branched from costumes to like brand names. So you think brand names are sort of taking over a larger portion of the market as Especially when it rose into the American market, I see Got it more. It. Got it. And what do you guys think? Sort of a direct correlation, some sort of relationship between the way K-pop has influenced fashion or vice versa? Uh, yeah, I think it's representation. We've seen BTS wear j back Couture at the Grammys, and I think that it's going to be that way moving forward. And Coco, what do you think? Well, coming from the K-pop world and being in Korea for about seven years now, definitely in the past few years, I've seen a lot of growth in the K-fashion world. Um, I feel like there's a lot of brands that are coming up with a lot of uh, very stage performance-like outfits that idols could wear. And I feel like just a few years back, they weren't really worn in public as like a daily life fashion. But right now, even in Korea, even in all over the world, they're definitely wearing these outfits that you've only seen on stage like out into the daily lives. So I feel like that's a very big change. Yeah. I completely agree with all of you guys. And actually, I think as much as bigger brands are receiving a lot more attention as a consequence of K-pop stars wearing them, I think we can sort of say the same in the opposite direction. I feel like a lot of idols are sort of using their fame and, you know, name to sort of give rise to a lot of underrated brands that haven't received sort of the attention they deserve as well, which actually leads me to my next question. You know, we see um, a lot of European and American influence in everyday Korean fashion, but homegrown sort of Korean fashion brands and designers just haven't quite received the same amount of widespread attention. So why do you think that is? And sort of what can designer brands in Korea do to change that, do you think? 
I feel like they don't really need to do much right now because with fashion, I feel the hardest thing is always originality because everything is done and already has been seen because that's why tra fashion trends, you know, return every like 10 years or so, right? But I feel like for Korea, K-pop has definitely opened a new door and it is so unique to just K-pop, like to Korea, that definitely through that door, a lot of brands in Korea that are home-based home are definitely gonna receive more attention. Uh, recently, even Dior wanted to collaborate with BTS to uh, make their whole stage outfit for their entire world tour, and that has never been done before. So Dior definitely knows that, you know, by helping out, you know, BTS, Korea, K-pop, it, it's gonna be amazing and it's gonna be very innovative. It's very different. It has never been done before. So definitely, yeah, they're gonna be out there. I think they're gonna get up there soon. And what about you, Do you know of any brands that are sort of not receiving the widespread attention they deserve and what things they might be able to do to sort of break out into the global scene? Yeah, um, I think Coco's right. I agree. I think Korean brands are on their way. Um, brands like Outer Air, their only flagship is in Korea, but they have positive sell-through at like Essence and Notre Shop. Um, I also think like Gentle Monster is on their way. They have the most insane pop-ups, and they even have, like, recently their collaboration with Fendi. So I think they're on our way, and Korea is going to be known for their designs pretty soon. That's amazing to hear some actually quite specific examples of brands. What about you, Will? What do you think about So I just brands? wanted to touch up on Coco's point that um, everything's been done. It's really hard for original Lally. Um When I visit Korea, when I go shopping on the streets, uh, for specifically for Korean brands, I feel like... It's really hard to distinguish them like by their branding because the looks are pretty much the same. When there is a trend in Korea, it's the trend. Everyone wants to like make something that does it. So I think it's really hard to distinguish since none of these brands have their own language. So I think it's along the lines of that, yeah. Right. And I feel like, you know, there's this sort of movement to support local brands, you know, even supporting your local coffee shop over going to Starbucks. I feel like as conscious consumers of K-culture, it's also important to try to give more attention to these sort of brands that might not be receiving the widespread attention that they deserve, right? Moving on to our next question. So one of the unique things really about Korea and the rest of East Asia compared to America, and this is a horrible generalization, but just to get the conversation started, is that men are actually just as fashionable as the women and purchase clothing at a higher rate than their Western counterparts. So why do you think that actually is? Actually, that actually goes into my personal backstory. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Tell us more. A little personal backstory. Um, when I was in high school, I mostly, I didn't know about Korean culture at all. Um, I was mainly, I was born in America, raised in America, so I grew up in a very American neighborhood. And I didn't care about what I wore. I didn't wash my hair for days. I didn't wash my face until I really needed to. But this isn't like a confession time, but sure, yeah, you okay, can go on. I'm getting to like the clothes, right? So the clothes were my mom shopped for me. I didn't even want to buy clothes, and, and all my mom, all my clothes were from like Walmart. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then what changed? And then I found Korean culture. Korean right. culture. And then wow. I looked at um at the time I think I remember um, Super Junior, Big Bang, all these like male groups, and then how how fashionable they were, how cool they were on stage, right? And I was like, you only live once, might as well just pay more attention to your appearance. So then I started shopping myself, and then I became more attracted to pretty things, so pretty outfits, and then I started shopping and shopping, and then now I have like four classes of just clothes. Wow, so sort of your switch over was inspired by K-pop stars, do you think that sort of affected your self-image or self-esteem or confidence? For anyway? sure. Okay. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Great. What about you guys? What do you guys think? Um, I think it's definitely, yeah, the power of K-pop. Plus, there's a big cultural difference in Korea where, you know, like guys, I don't know, it's very common to see them go to like a beauty shop and buy facial masks to take care of their skin. Whereas here, I feel like it's less common. So... 
I guess the cultural difference is really big on that. And plus, a lot of idol, like especially boy groups, they're actually um, you know the ambassadors for a lot of these makeup brands and a lot of fashion brands as well. So I feel like being more you know open to that, like the cultural in Korea, that what makes I guess men be more easy to like buy these fashion brands and like take care of their like outer appearance. Yeah. I completely agree. R Loretta, do you have anything to say on this? Um, well, when I worked as a personal shopper, I can only base this on my own stats, but 70% of men were my clients. I think it's the hype products and streetwear has a big impact on it. Um, men are more likely to buy now to wear now, whereas women will buy to wear per season. Right, and I also just to, you know, add to that i think we're sort of past the age of making generalizations that you know like men have to dress better or actually women dress better and one interesting point is back home in korea as much as men are known to be a little better dressed take a little better care of themselves it's also societally sort of frowned upon if a man is sort of like too into their looks and they take too much effort which i think is largely rooted in you know korean confucius values that you know have sort of accumulated over the years but I feel like, you know, there's a real turnover right now. And I feel like men, women, gender really plays no role in determining how you get to dress yourself, how you get to represent yourself through beauty, through clothes or whatnot. So I feel like it's a really exciting time for everyone, right? All right. Well, uh, we have to talk about sort of the fashion industry at large, I think. We can't continue this conversation without that. So South Korea's women's beauty industry was actually estimated to be more than anybody in the audience want to take a random guess. South Korean beauty industry size. Anyone? One billion, two billion, no? No idea? Well, actually, do you guys want to take a guess, our panelists? couple billion. One, sorry? A couple billion. A couple million. Actually, it was $13 billion in 2018 alone, which is crazy. And as Asians and, you know, Asian Americans, I wanted to ask you sort of how you've seen K-Beauty break into the American market and where you sort of see it going from here. And it can be K-Fashion or K-Beauty, really. Well, um, I don't know anything about K-Beauty other than I, I use the cleanser and I use the moisturizer. But from what I've seen on the streets of um, Flushing, New York, I see all these Korean makeup brands having their individual stores on the streets of New York. So I saw like um, skincare, makeup brands. I don't even know these makeup brands, but I'm like, that is a Korean celebrity on the face of that. And then the most recent thing is I went to CVS Pharmacy and then out of nowhere, there's like this, these, this stand of just all Korean face masks and stuff. I'm like, I yeah. had no idea where that came from, honestly. But it's, I, I feel like it's also the trendy thing right now. You know, aside, I feel like Korean skincare brands have a reputation for their high quality, but it's also highly trendy, right? So I feel like CVS and big brands like that are capitalizing on that. What do you guys think about the future growth of K-beauty? Um, I definitely think this is hands down the power of K-pop. Like we definitely opened the doors to the whole world because, you know, just by having idols be the base of certain brands. For example, if like a brand collaborated with BTS, I feel like everyone, the whole wide world wants to try this product, right? right? So I feel like definitely, definitely K-beauty is working with the hands of K-pop and how it's spreading worldwide, yeah. And what about you, Loretta? Do you personally use any K-Beauty brands oh, products? I'm obsessed. <laughs> but I think it's the influence of K-pop and K-dramas. You know, you watch K-dramas, you have like a, like a zoom in on like the products on a girl's vanity or whatever. And I literally look it up because of that. And I think like in the future, like hopefully maybe we'll see you know, K-Beauty and J-Beauty shops pop up like Sephora. Right. Well, just a fun quick question on the side here. What is one K-Beauty product that you guys cannot live without? First, do you guys do like the 15-step K, no, too yes. much for you? I do like maybe a nine step, nine not step. 15. That's but. pretty significant. Yeah. So what's like one 11. item that you would either highly recommend or one that you use every single day? Sunscreen. 
for sure. Screen. That's yes. a good one. What Sunscreen. about you, Loretta? Uh, I, I do like the 11 steps. I do the 11 steps. Yes. But uh, mostly in the evening, I can't live without toner. I love toner. And like and like skin conditioner. Conditioner. What about you, Will? Anything you'd like to share with us? You're glowing um, today, so you better you must have some secrets, right? Well, um, I do agree with sunscreen. I highly recommend everyone use sunscreen. Um, the next thing I would recommend is lip balm. Lip, lip balm. balm. Yeah, I recommend lip balm. Always got to keep your lips moisturized, right? Well, anyways, I digress. I do want to bring it back to fashion a little bit. So, you know, to promote healthy and normative body images, France, for example, passed laws in 2017 to stop brands from using underweight models in their marketing and runway shows. Now, with Korean culture so closely tied to concepts of beauty, do you see Korea moving towards something like that in the future, or are we still miles behind? Um, living there right now, and I've been living there for six, seven years, to be totally honest, I don't think any time in the near future. It's not because, I think it's just because it's a very big cultural difference. For example, if I talk to my friends here and I tell them, I'm actually on a diet, they're like, why? You're, you're, you look great right now, why are you trying to go on a diet? Whereas if I say the same thing in Korea, my friends would be like, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to be on a diet too, yeah, go for <laughs> it, what are you doing to lose weight? Right. You know, it's kind of more of like a different reaction, different perspective more than, yeah, it's just very different. I get very different reactions right. and just everyone, all the girls are on a, always on a diet in Korea. I know, <laughs> can relate, I, right? I can totally relate. I don't know one girl days, who's not. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So you're yeah. saying it's a little bit more culturally rooted. Yeah. It's almost like a social activity that yes. Korean women and men all are yeah. constantly engaging in, right? And it's not really like they see it as an unhealthy way, but it's just, um, when they say, when they see a lot of idols losing weight, they actually applaud them for all their hard work that they go through. Right. Whereas in the States, they might think like, you know, why are they putting themselves in such a risk, health risk? It's a very different perspective. It yeah. really is. I completely agree with you. What about you guys? What do you guys think about sort of the relationship between K-pop and body image, health? Uh, well, I think watching women in K-pop uh, recently, they all look much healthier than a few years ago, um, and I. So it makes me think that globally we're moving forward, and you know we're going to also ban underweight models as well. Right, right. What about you, Will? Yeah, I agree. I don't see it happening like France anytime soon. It's it's way too heavily um, rotated around a really, a really beautiful, perfect image that this homogenous society has on. The, the perfect body image that every single uh, male or female should have. Right, right. So, um, and the Korea plastic surgery business is, is way too booming off of just making someone slimmer. If somebody doesn't want to lose weight, they take the shortcut. And it's just way too much of a booming industry for it to just suddenly make a law that just says you can't use underweight models or skinny people anymore. Right. And I do think sort of given the amount of influence that K-pop idols have worldwide, you know, models for the same reason they're imposing these restrictions because at the end of the day, they just hold so much influence. So while we might not see, you know, K-pop industry regulating body standards anytime soon, I do personally think it's very important to start the conversation and make sure that these idols are being trained and they're performing in a very healthy state, right? Both for themselves and their own well-being but also for those who are going to be affected by seeing them on stage, right? Um, so, actually, I'm going to move, we went to body images, now we're going to move back to, a little bit into fashion. Uh, I really am curious to know, as our fashion gurus, what fashion brands most excite you right now, and what brands you see on the rise? Give us the inside intel on what's going to be hot next. I just want to give a shout out to my friend. He recently launched his brand and uh, Henry's been wearing it, Seventeen's been wearing it, so it's getting out there. But he just got onto Seoul Fashion Week. Wow. Yeah, it's called Lemetique. It's L-E-M-E-T-Q-U-E. -E. So definitely check out his brand. Yeah. 
Can you tell us quality. a little bit more about the brand? What kind of aesthetic they have? Uh, oh, BTS even wore it for their, one of their stages. Wow. It's very flashy and very, very, um, yeah, it stands out. It's very colorful, a lot of patterns, and yeah, it definitely looks for like a stage performance, yeah. Wow, it's amazing. I'll definitely check it out. What about you guys? Do you guys have any brands that you are looking forward to being on the rise? Can you link me that website? Can you link me that website? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm interested in that. I'm going to cop now. a thing or two tonight. <laughs> yeah, but um, particular brands, I can't really think of any except for Coco's own brand. <laughs> tell us more. Do tell us more. Actually, if, if I don't know if you can see her nails right now, that's her design right there. Wow, that's amazing. Can you tell us a little bit more? Please do. Can you tell me oh, more you, about please, my own you brand? Do. <laughs> well, I recently launched my own store, offline store in LA, and I'm selling also online, so check it out. <laughs> All right. Can we expect beautiful feminine pieces like what you're wearing? Oh, I actually wanted to make sure that it was all unisex because, oh. yeah, I wanted to go for like a girl wearing boyfriend's hoodie look or like a boyfriend wearing the girlfriend's hoodie look. So, yeah, all I love one that. size. I'm going to be busy shopping tonight, it yes. seems, you guys. <laughs> what about you, Loretta? Do you have any brands you're looking forward to? Uh, looking forward to... I am really into Marine Sarah, but probably the influence of K-pop, because I've seen it everywhere, um, and New Dior. Sounds good. Well, I actually would like to also mention a brand that my good friends have created. It's called Ise, and it's... Uh, it means second generation. So they're second ge generation Korean Americans and they started off doing leather goods, but instead of just making quality leather goods, what they would do is go into sort of the countryside, find a Korean woman who has been using traditional Korean dyes and sort of use those prints on their uh, leather goods, or they would draw inspiration from traditional Korean houses and sort of use those designs. So it's very much, you know, rooted in philosophical things, you know, about Korean history. So I thought that was really interesting. And they actually also made their debut at Korean Fashion Week, too. So that's worth checking out. Little plug for my friends. Um, well, moving on to our last question, actually. The Korean fashion industry definitely looks stronger than ever with no signs of slowing down. Do you guys agree? So Gangnam is actually, some say, set to be on the same tier, if not already on the same tier as Harajuku within the next few years. So what do you think the next decade in Korean fashion looks like? I know that's a very tough question, but you can just in terms of macro trends, in terms of styles, specifically designs, in any way, shape, or form. Well, uh, DDM, everyone knows Dong De Moon, right? It's the fastest yeah. paced fashion, I think, in the world almost. I can't say for sure. But uh, I've been going to DDM pretty often to check out fabrics, to check out the newest trends. And it's ridiculous because what they display and the stuff that they're selling changes every two weeks. It's that fast. Like the trends in right. Korea, it's unbelievable how fast it is. So yeah, I, I can't imagine where Korea will be in a decade, but definitely yeah, it's going to be bigger than Harajuku for sure. Right, right. Um, even, you know, a lot of foreigners from Japan, all over the world are actually visiting Korea for the fashion, for K-pop, for K-beauty. Right. So, yeah, I'm kind of excited for where Korea is going to be heading. Yeah, soon. I think we all definitely are. What about you guys? Do you guys think Korea will be introducing any new trends to the global world, a uh, fashion world that we haven't seen before? or? Um, yeah, I think at this rate, definitely we'll see something new. I think it's exciting for it to become the new Harajuku, or even with like luxury houses, it might even be like a Ginza. I completely agree with you. And what about you, Will? Yes. Yes. Yes, in because summary. Korea is, is just genius. It's just genius. Well, with the coal, uh -huh. music industry, the fashion, the beauty, everything is just genius. So I have high expectations. Yeah, 
I think we're definitely doing something right. I mean, I know all of you guys, have, this is actually my first KCon, and just seeing all of the energy here, the passion for K-beauty, K-fashion, K-culture, and of course, K-pop was incredibly impressive to me. So I don't think this is going to stop any time in the near future, right? Um, all right, I think that's all of our questions for today, actually, but it might be great to take a couple of questions from the audience for us. So any questions about K-Fashion Beauty? I'm gonna give you the mic. Okay. I was curious about um, how you feel about biodegradable clothing. I know we're using a lot of like industries where they constantly are turning over fashion and it's cheaply made. I was wondering if you we're into looking for like secondhand clothing, especially you, like when you're looking for styles. And do you guys also do that as well? Because it is kind of a problem that we're constantly turning out clothing um, in such cheap amount, and we're throwing it away. I, I love your point because I, I recently found out that when I've been buying all these cheaper clothing, right, and then when I, when I don't want them anymore, my style changes very quickly as well, so when I don't want them anymore, they just pile or I donate it. And then, like personally, I don't know what happens after that, but, but if everyone does it, it's gonna create a problem. So I highly, highly support the secondhand clothing industry. My way of purchasing clothes is always purchase quality over quantity. I would buy um, maybe a t-shirt for, I would go up to like hundreds if I really like it, but I would keep that for a very long time, as opposed to paying $25 for a t-shirt and then get tired of it and who knows what happens to it, you know? Yeah, Loretta, do you want to add to I'm that? I'm all for secondhand clothing. I think it's great. You're saving on luxury. I personally like to thrift and remix my own clothing and I think it's a very popular thing. Um, even like apps like Girled, like secondhand luxury, you go. Know. Right, and sort of to add to that, actually, in addition to, you know, using second-hand clothing, I think I'm trying to be more conscious of, you know, the carbon footprint of the clothing I'm buying as well as how humanely it was produced. And I feel like a lot of Korean brands, it's, it's very trendy and, you know, to be co socially conscious when you make purchases. But in Korea, I feel like it's not as important as a factor when you're purchasing uh, clothing. So I think second-hand clothing is a great way to sort of start that movement, right? But thank you for your question. Any other questions about K-fashion, K-beauty, or for our wonderful panelists here? Yes. Thank you. Uh, this is for Coco, because you know, you're a singer, so I figure we have stylists that dresses you when you go on stage. Do you ever feel like you don't like the style, or do you prefer to pick your own style instead of the, what the stylist gives you? Oh, I like that question. That's a fun question. <laughs> Actually, my stylist, she prepares about maybe five to ten outfits, and she sends it to me via Kakao, if you guys know. She sends it to me through text, and then the day before, she lets me choose about five, and then she brings them to the place. But while you work with a stylist for so long, she immediately knows, like, you know, how your body is and what kind of style you like. So she's always on point now. I've been working for her, with her for like three, four years now. So yeah. That's a fun question, actually. I always love it when I feel like a lot, whether it's idols or artists, you can tell that they added their own flair instead of letting somebody else completely dress them because it's such an important method of expression, right? If you're letting somebody else dress you, I feel like that's almost muting your own personality. So I hope idols, I know right now, like a lot of idols are mostly dressed by stylists, but I hope they can exercise more freedom in the future about what they get to wear, right? All right, any more questions? Yes. Uh, so this is for Coco. I just wanted to ask, you have your own fashion brand now. Like, how do you see it going in the future? Like in the future, I'm hoping that I can, right now I'm only releasing like one item at a time as a very exclusive, uh, limited quantity. But in the future, I hope that I could prepare more at a time. Right now, I'm kind of doing it by myself, so it's a lot of work. But um, yeah, hopefully in the future, I'll have like 
more stuff options available and more sizes, hopefully, as well. Thank you. I think it's so amazing that you're operating your own brand. And I'm sure all of us can't wait to see it grow. So keep us posted. <laughs> Any other questions for our panelists? or about K-fashion, K-beauty. All right, then I think we're actually going to wrap up our panel here. Again, this was K-Con Studios, Korea Fashion Now and the Future, presented by Represent. Can we have a round of applause for our lovely panelists, please? We hope you have an amazing rest of the time at K-Con. Make sure you connect with us on socials and Come up to us, say hi, ask us more questions about K-Fashion, K-Beauty, absolutely anything. We'll see you guys in other sessions. Have a great day. Bye.